All right, so this is the last one from the series of Divergence and Stokes um, Theorem Problems. So we're getting to the end here. Okay, so this problem, um, we have a vector function, and we're just asked to verify Stokes' theorem over the surface of a hemispherical bowl with a radius of 4 and a circular rim. So um, we can have a couple of choices here. So I'm going to set this up with a counterclockwise DL. So that means that this DL is along this uh, circular rim here, so circular rim. Um, and so when it says verify Stokes' theorem, kind of with the previous videos we saw this before, but um, we're going to set up this um, DL. So in our case, around the circle of the rim, and we're going to dot it with our A vector, and then we're going to integrate uh, across the bounds for DL, uh, and we're going to then next uh, do this curl operation. So find the gradient cross A, or sorry, the del operator cross A. So del operator crossed with this A that we have, and then dotted with our ds, so the surface vector. And the surface vector in this case, uh, for the right-hand side, is going to be the outer part, um, the outer surface of this half sphere. Um, so I have them written down here. So our dl, first off, will be this r uh, d phi in the phi hat. So this is our phi hat direction. So uh, it rotates with our phi angle um, and is pointing in the direction of the phi angle displacement. So like if we're displacing r, it's kind of sticking out of r, um, and it's moving around this coordinate system as phi changes. Um, so that is our phi hat direction, um, and we have r d phi. So r d phi, um, I think we said this in a previous video, but if you have r phi, that actually gives you um, an arc length. So like I have a, so I have an angle here. It's going to um, equal to the length here. So that's why we have this differential phi, because we want to know um, how far around we go kind of to get that, that differential length. So that's our setup for dl, uh, for ds, for a setup for this exterior part of the sphere. Um, we have this general ds for a sphere. Um, so this, this equation, when integrated, gives us the surface area of a sphere. Um, I, you can reference the cheat sheet kind of for this one here. So I'll write it down here. And I kind of did an explanation in an earlier video. Oh, sorry, it's down here uh, for spherical, um, going out in the r hat direction. So I kind of did a general explanation earlier in a different video, uh, but I won't get into it too much here because this is going to be a long problem. So we should really go ahead and get started here. I'm just trying to cut down on how long it takes to get through these guys. Okay, uh, so step one, setting up our a dot dl. So we have our dl uh, here, and we have our a, and we're going to set up our equation. So we have our a, uh, which is equal to a uh, three sine of, here, I'll set this guy up right away. So we have, let me grab a thicker pen. Uh, okay, so a, our a vector is 3 sine of phi, phi over 2, uh, in the phi hat direction, okay? Uh, and then we are multiplying that by our dl, which we have right up here, right, um, that we talked about. So that is r d phi uh, in the phi hat direction. Um, so just to recap again, uh, so phi hat dot phi hat is equal to 1. These directional unit vectors, if you dot them with each other, it's equal to 1. Um, and so we're going to simplify our terms here. Uh, and we're going to end up with 3 sine of phi over 2. Uh, and that's going to be r d phi. Um, so our r for this uh, dl, we actually know what it is. It's going to be static all the way around that dl. So it is a constant. Um, so looking over here, it's a constant. Uh, so we were given a radius of 4 in the problem. So it's going to be 4 all the way around this DL. And we don't really use it in this problem, but just to note, um, by convention, this theta angle goes from 0 to pi. So when we, based on our orientation here, because it's, it's kind of upside down, this is actually from 0 to pi over 2. And then this would be pi over 2 to pi. So we're going to see that later. Just keep that in mind for right now. OK. Um, all right, so we can pull our RT outside because it is a constant and we know what it is. So we're going to take R out here and then we have 3 sine of phi over 2 uh, d phi. I think that's correct there. I'm going to double check myself as we're going. Okay, so let's find our bounds for phi. Um, we're also going to pull out the 3 and then multiply it by R. So we're going to have 3 times R and that R equals 4 here. Uh, so we can turn that into a constant. And then we have sine of phi over 2, d phi. So, um, okay, so this out, outer part, we can go ahead and we'll set it equal to 12 in the next step here. Uh, but let's find our bounds first. So our bounds for phi 
Uh, let's go up and look at the figure here. So we have a full half circle. Our phi uh, by convention starts here. And we had a full revolution for our shape. So that means that our phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So 2 pi is the same as 360 degrees. So all the way around our circle. So it's just by convention, go to 2 pi. Um, and OK, to solve this, we're going to have to do um, kind of a little trick here because we have this phi over 2. Um, so we're going to do a u sub for this. So it won't be a super complicated one. Um, Hopefully, I should be giving you guys some Calc 2 flashbacks right now. Okay, so, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in this U for phi, and then we're going to also change our bounds. So because we manipulated our phi by dividing it by 2, and now our variable is U, we need to manipulate our bounds by dividing them by 2. So our bounds are going to change pi over 2 equals pi for top, and 0 over 2 equals 0 for bottom. Okay, and this is just because we did that u sub, we need to apply the manipulation uh, to our bounds as well. Okay, so we have 12 on the outside, right? 12, and then um, 0 to pi, because we did that u change. Then we have sine, oops, sorry, we have a 2 here, because we sub out our, let's look at our pieces here. So we have 2 du for d phi, so we're going to sub that out for d phi. So we're going to put in 2 du for d phi. And then for our sine of phi over 2, uh, we're going to have sine of u, because we're going to sub out our u for that phi over 2. OK, cool. So let's go ahead and integrate this guy here. So I have 24 on the outside, right? Um, and then I'm going to end up with uh, cosine. Actually, sorry, negative cosine, because the integral of negative cosine would be sine. Negative cosine of u from 0 to pi, uh, and that's going to equal um, negative cosine of pi minus a negative cosine of 0. Uh, and cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So it's going to turn into uh, 24, 24 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. So we're going to have 48. OK, so that's our top part here. So we did part 1. So we found this a dot dl. I'm going to break this up and stop this video here. And for the second part of this video, we're going to find our right-hand side, so this curl.df.